Why take on a lot of risk doing something you've never done before if there's a way for you to learn it with little mm. risk? It's, it's, it's almost like getting paid to learn. I look at wholesaling as a strategy where you get paid to learn how to become a good real estate investor. Why is that true? Because in order for me to serve my client, I have to know what a good deal looks like. At the end of the day, I got to get it at a lower price than they need it for. Right. Okay. I know what a good deal looks like. What does that make me? That makes me a great investor because investing is nothing more than putting your money into something and getting a positive ROI from it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. A great investor makes money off their investments. The, the number one rule to investing is never lose money. Hey, that's pretty common sense right there, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Blueprint. Mm. This conversation about building up your blueprint. It's time to take it because time is wasted. Go grind and chase it. Don't lose it. This generation need integration with information to move with. An inclination that is abiding in entertaining improvement. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Respect My Blueprint podcast. This is your main man, your blueprint mastermind. Excited to be here. Guys, I know it's been a while since I was able to bring a guest on the show, so I'm excited about this having this guest here, right? Because, listen, I'm not into real estate, and I ain't going to lie to y'all. Y'all know I'm the credit guy. I'm the funding guy. So I wanted to go ahead and bring somebody who knew what the hell it was talking about when it came to real estate. OK, I'm not going to go ahead and hold up anybody's time any longer, but I have a real estate entrepreneur. He's going to teach us how you'll be able to go ahead and get to the back and get into real estate without having no money, no experience. Yeah, we're going to get into generational wealth talk, guys. And I got my main man, Gene, with us. How you doing, Gene? Absolutely amazing. Blessed by the best, King. How That's what's up, man. Glad to have you here, man. Ooh, man. Listen, Glad man. To I'm going to tell y'all, anybody that comes in with a, a, a suit on, y'all know he bought business, right? <laughs> y'all know he bought business. Feel me? Okay. So, Gene, man, well, first of all, glad to have you here. And by the way, guys, before I go ahead and give Gene the mic, Yeah, yeah, I got a fellow IUCM, fellow Haitian brother in the building, so it's gonna get spicy in here, y'all. Better believe that. (laughs) You don't come in, man. All my IUCMs, you know what we talk about in here. You feel me? But Gene, first of all, man, listen, I did my homework on you. You know what I'm saying? I've seen. You know, in the private jets with the Hem 500, you know, going to Mexico, you feel me? The masterminds, I've seen you. Also, you have a community, you feel me? The SOW community, right? That's right. Yeah, so I've done my research, you feel me? Because, you know, that's what I do. That's what I'm supposed to do. But if you could go ahead and let the people know uh, who you are and how have you become the man that you are right now. Awesome. Awesome. First off, I want to go ahead and say thank you, Wes, for having me on the show right now. And thank you for putting together the, the Blueprint Movement and helping people be able to discover how they can go from wherever they are today to a much better quality of life through entrepreneurship and finances. And one of the mm-hmm. key parts of being able to improve your wealth is actually investing in real estate. So we're going to dive into <laughs> real estate. Like, like, <laughs> okay. when, when I teach real estate, I want to make sure that people understand that real estate is more than just a building, a house, and some land. Like It's absolutely your God-given mandate to own real estate. Right? What? As a matter of fact, the first thing that God gave us after he gave us life was dominion over a space. In Genesis, uh, Genesis one, right? Okay. He created the heaven, the earth, created the creatures, and he created man to to maintain and expand. And have creation. dominion over the land. Yeah, Got you. Okay. Side of it, right? Okay. Okay. And that is ownership. Man, I That's like ownership. how you put that because you're yeah. right. Absolutely. If you think about it in that perspective, That's okay. Ownership. So what God gave us, the first gift He gave us was dominion over a space. That's why every single one of us, deep down inside, regardless of what our situation is. Every single person knows that they need to own their own house. That is true. But you know what? It's so hard for individuals to do so. I mean, especially with interest rates and the difficulty of just becoming a homeowner and everything like that, which we want to talk into. I want to talk about that, but I want to ask about your background. How did you get into real estate? 
So real estate was. <laughs> <laughs> we I, talked I, about I this a little question. bit. I love that question because anytime I get asked the question, you know, right? I always provide the same answer. Like real estate was something that fell in my lap. Like real estate was something that when I came across it, I didn't even want it. I'll be honest with you because I was so heavily into my entertainment, my music career. Right. When real estate came about the first time, it was like, oh, okay, that's nice, but that's that's for them. Yeah, so it, I didn't really pay did it hit you money. right? So, so I'm gonna go ahead and break okay. down the story because it's kind of crazy how it happened, right? So. <laughs> After dropping out of college the first time, I went to college at Indian River State College, which is in Fort Pierce, Florida. Fort Pierce. And I dropped out. I was doing the thing. You know, who can't know Yeah, man. Hey. So my mom, like, my dad, she wasn't like, feeling go, like, that. Go, go get you something in the medical field. You know, the <laughs> yeah. Beast, the beast ain't going to make you rich. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, you're they, trying to tell them you want to be the next Timberland. They ain't right, trying to hear right, that. I was like, man, go to nursing school. Yeah, so I'm like, uh-huh. okay, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a good son. I'm listening. Right to the direction, but it wasn't me, man. One thing about me is, I, is I wear my faith on my sleeve. I got no okay. problem jumping. I got no problem taking right. a leap of faith if it okay. means that I'm in alignment with what I'm called to do. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I knew okay. that nursing wasn't me, but I knew that music was me. So I'm like, okay, right. if I'm not taking this seriously and I wasn't getting the grades I needed to get to proceed, so okay, I said, I'm gonna drop out, right? But when that happened, my parents decided, okay, you're gonna drop out, we're gonna kick you out. Oh, Lord, so I got kicked out, I ended up going to Orlando. That's how I ended up in Orlando. My and this is your early there. 20s, right? Yeah, actually, I was about 20 years old, so that's how I ended up in Orlando. From that point, I decided to go back to school again. This time, I went to Fort University, it was something just, that you wanted exactly. to do. I feel like if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go all the way with it. I got the student loan debt, all that, to go back. <laughs> and you know, a lot of things happened during that time, but. Getting kicked out was the best thing that ever happened to me because it put me in an environment where I got exposure to more than what was available around me. Kind of opened up your eyes to the big lights a little bit. Gotcha. Exactly. Because that is what put me in the direction to go to school at at Fulsa University. And from going to school there, I I learned a couple of things about the music industry that kind of had my mind open. Right. Open enough to do something different. Because what ended up happening during that time was when I finally discovered my mentor, I didn't jump into real estate right away. Right? Okay, so you so, had to gradually get into it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, back, so, so back. what I was doing, because I didn't have a job, I had an $8.50 an hour job when I moved to Orlando. I transferred Dang. my job. I, was, I used to work for an assisted living home. I won't say their name. Right, right? okay. And it's only because of what happened, how I left. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. So we're going to keep them up out of right, here. Right, yeah, right. we'll need we, them we, in we here. So, so I, I ended up transferring jobs. So I had a job when I got there. But when I started school, that's when it all ended. Because when I started school, right. I was less available to go to work. And my manager decided, you know what? We're just going to give you one hour on a Sunday. I said, I'm not coming back in. That's one crazy. hour on a Sunday? One hour a week. At 8.50 8. 50 an hour? 8.50 an hour. I'm come like, on, man. This. Yeah, you know, come on. You can't that, get jiggy with this that, now. That come was on. the day, Wes, that I made the decision that I will never let another human being be in control of what I can do, my finances, and what's available to me and my options. That was the day that I decided, you know, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Even though I don't know nothing about it, even right. though I don't know how to do it, I'm going to figure it out, right? So that's where that other leap, that second leap of faith came in. So now when I got into Fort Worth University, I decided that I would, I would take one of my living expense checks and I'd invest into a camera, a $600 Canon T3i. I'll never forget it. Since I was doing a lot of entertainment, recording music and things like that, it was natural to me to be in that creative content space. Like so, a content creator. Exactly. Okay. So, so when I got my camera, I figured, okay, this would be a great stream of income. I could take photos for people. I can learn how to do video. Yeah, create some I, content. I and for myself. Makes right? sense. Okay. Since, since I wrote music and rapped and all that. Um, and so from getting that camera, I started to pursue a career in videography and photography. Ah. I did a lot of free work. Right to get freelancing money. and stuff like exactly, that. Exactly. Okay. And that was going to be my way to supplement myself while I was going through school because I didn't have a job. Right. Okay. And, all right. So that, you still was working at the eight, the assisted nah, living position. You used to say, gone, "Forget that." Didn't. Okay. All right. Yeah. They baked chicken. Right. I just want to say this to the audience: Don't ever let anybody tell you what you're worth because you are worth whatever God tells you that you're worth, which is unlimited. Facts, okay. facts, so facts, and that's that's one of the blueprint right there, guys. So yeah, definitely take that gem. All right. So I decided I'm going to figure this thing out. Uh, so I started freelancing. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of free gigs in the beginning. That's okay. actually how I started to get around more entrepreneurs because I was starting that in a, in, during the time where content uh-huh. creation was still very young from in the masses perspective. Yeah, so it really hasn't right? really blown up the way it is now. It, exactly. Like okay. now, nowadays, everybody with a phone is doing content. Oh, my but God. Back, come back, on now. Yeah. Back then, unless you were like an entrepreneur who knew the game like that, like who understood like, you know, 
uh, content marketing and different things like that. Yeah. Really doing it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, that was back when YouTube was still young. You know, Stan. So you was fortunate enough to be one of the trailblazers to get in early. In other words, yeah, yeah. Got so it. I was, okay. I was in the back though. I was helping entrepreneurs who were doing that. Content. Okay, so right. more behind the scenes, exactly, pretty much. Exactly. All right. So that's actually how I came across one of my mentors. It was from a friend of a friend, and it's so interesting. I met that friend because I was at Fulls University working inside studios because I was just doing my path, what I was passionate about, and that brought me into working in a studio where I met a friend of mine. Right. Who, from connecting with him on some music stuff, we ended up doing a project together. And through that project, I met someone who would then become my mentor. Wow. Yeah, Which so having a mentor is very critical what? and important. I tell I mean, people having a mentor is the cheat code. Yes, it is. You it feel is me? Fast track. It's it is definitely the, the cheat code. The ultimate cheat code to wherever you want to get to. Because at the end of the day, you don't know what you don't know. And Facts. You don't know, and yeah. you never know what you don't know unless somebody puts you on. And having a mentor also cuts time in half because it allows you to avoid making the mistakes that you're ultimately going to make, period. Absolutely. Uh, right, 100%, 100%. right. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. Can, can I keep it real? On keep it show? real, man. That's what. That's the blueprint. You feel me? Let's talk. Come on. Come on. I was definitely that person, Wes. Uh -huh. I could not do it without a mentor. I was that wow. person. Wow. See, that's was, good. That's humbling that you're able to be vulnerable and share that too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I still live by that. Like, even though I have the experience I have, I still seek mentors for everything I'm doing. Right. Yeah. And I think Elon Musk mentioned this one time that Larry Ellison is his mentor. You also have Bill Gates and high net worth individuals. If they're able to go ahead and have a mentor at their level of success, I mean... Who is everybody else to not be able to go ahead and do the same thing as well, too? So, exactly. yeah, I completely agree. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So now you went ahead, you started off your music career, figured, okay, maybe I'm not too good at this music thing, or maybe I'm just going to switch gears. So you get into the content creation, right? That went ahead and opened up the path and opened up the doors for you. Beautiful, right? Right, right. So, go ahead. And, and so... From working inside those studios, uh -huh. I, I worked inside the studios as an audio engineer. So I was the one behind the boards and everything, like mixing the music, because that's what I was going through school for. Right. right? Okay. Like making beats, all that. And um, that's when I met who was a client turned into a friend. I met the mutual friend. So when I met the mutual friend, that's when I started using my camera and helping him with his content because he was out, you know, and we became, you know, started working together, right? And that's the first time I saw a large fat check. It was a $30,000 check. It was one day we, we went to go make content together, right? And we went to a SunTrust bank in Winter Park. I'll never forget it. It's an interesting thing <laughs> because, it, it, because it did, but it was right. subtly, though. I'm the type of person where, it's like, when I focus, when I lock in on something, like, I'm not paying attention. Tunnel vision. Like, I don't really got care it. about what the, the next person is doing. I care about what I got to get done. To get to this objective to right here. To, which at that time was working with my camera, working with music and all that. But when I saw the $30,000 check, it caught my attention because, I mean, it's a $30,000 check. How many yeah. people walking around with that much? Of, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Come so, on. So, but at that time, remember, I was sharing with you, you know, before we came on. Right. I'm thinking, okay, but that's for them. Right. I'm yeah. Like, Dave was able to touch him. that. Like, yeah. That's right. Cool. Like, that's great, bro. Like, it's, it's great that you know how to make money, that kind of money. That's fine. But I'm just here to be behind the camera. That's my job. Right. Know? OK. And so one thing led to another. We kept on working together. And then now I started to do videos. I started to record when, when he would do events and stuff like that. And I would have to edit the videos. Now, this this is where it got me. Anybody who's ever done any kind of video editing knows put together <laughs> find a product. The editing process requires you to listen to clips over and, and over oh, and over and over and God. over again. Tedious. Okay. Tedious. And that was God moving because I had no interest in it, in real estate investing. I knew it was something important, but at that time in my life, again, it wasn't what my mission was. Right. right? It was so a part of your vision. Exactly. But because I had to listen over and over and over, and I'm like, I started to pay attention. Wait, also, wait, wait. the so, content that you're editing now, it's like, hold on. Yeah. It's hitting you. Yeah. Right? Okay. So like, like, wait, wait. So how did he make that $30,000 check? Oh, what? He just, he just, wow, this sounds simple. This is really, simple. like, I could do this. Right? Damn. So, okay. So, so, once, so once I started listening and then, you know, I started paying attention to the information, that's when I started getting curious. Once I started mm. getting curious, now that's when I started to really look at it. Right? Right. Okay. And, and I remember... I remember selling the only car I had 
It was a 1993 Damn. Honda Accord. This, this is when I made a decision. Okay, I'm gonna try this thing out. Right. So what I learned, bro, how to do you first, sold your car. To, I sold, I sold oh, I got to hear this. Come on, so, man. I sold my only car was a 1993 Honda Accord. Yeah. I sold it for twelve hundred dollars. But mind you, I'm a big car guy, right? So yeah, I was putting money into this car, changed the engine, repainted the engine. I did all this. This work, is your baby, right? right. It's my baby, right? Put like uh-huh. eleven thousand dollars of my own money into it, right? And so I sold it because I had a bigger dream. That was the one thing that, wow. that, that I would probably never get rid of. I got rid of it because I had a bigger dream. Right. Okay. And so I got my twelve hundred bucks for it. Yeah. PlayStation Four. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it because that was going to be the seed money into my real estate business. Your first deal. My first deal. Now I'll be keeping one hundred percent honest with y'all. Right. This goes back to our conversation about a mentor. This was me doing it without a mentor. Oh, okay. okay. I put the money in. Wes, uh-huh. And guess how much money I made? How much? Nothing. Oh Lord, not okay. not, not the big ting. donut, man. Okay, not a ting. I didn't yeah. get nothing back. All right. And Damn. It, and I'll be honest with you, it wasn't because the information wasn't right. You I, didn't I was, get the mentorship. It was because I didn't have the skill set to produce the results that's required from the information when you take action. So when I go out there, put my marketing out, start doing the things that I was watching on the videos and all that, right? Right. Like, all research. I'm doing everything wrong. I'm not calling the people back. I'm not like I'm doing everything. Oh, wrong, right? okay. So I'm, I'm not getting my return. You know what I mean? Right. So, so this must money. have been discouraging for you at this point. It was. It was discouraging. However, it wasn't the end because I know that. Hey, I know somebody who does this. The person that you was doing the videos for. Right? Obviously, right. right. <laughs> like, okay, you know what? It's time for me to just to be like, look, I need help. Yeah. You know, I think I think it's important that we just not glaze over that because there's a lot of people. Who, first of all, as human beings, mm-hmm. especially as children of God, we have a lot of power. Wow. As individuals, we got a lot of power. Like, like yeah, our okay. minds are designed to solve problems, period. So, so okay. if you, whenever you submit a question into the mental, into the mind, and the question is, how do I do X? You're going to figure it out. And it's going to be a matter huh. of time. Period. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of determination that you're going to put behind that at the end of the day. And that's a gift and a curse. That is true. Yeah, because it could lead you down the wrong path and you'd be like, wow, you feel me? But I see what you're saying. And it's a gift because we don't have limitations. True. As human beings, we don't. It's a curse because if, if we're stubborn with it, we think we got so much power that we can do it without anybody's help. And that is where a lot ah, of people Ah, that's where the downfall comes. Yeah, I, I and see that's what, what you're I saying. did. Right, I okay. Got, I got a whole person who knows it, and I'm over here spend, selling my car, spending the, the, money. The and person and doing that inadvertently yeah. got you into it, you didn't even think to bother, oh, yeah. let me go to him so he could lace me up on it, some games. Exactly. All right, exactly. yeah. You know, I'm, trying to do it, I'm trying to do it by myself. So, I, so that's when I decided, you know what? I got to get some help. Right, so I went okay. So I him, like, look. Did you tell him about the failure or you just went to him and be like, man, I, you know, could help me out a little bit? I told bit. him about it. I told okay, him. all right, all right. Um, so, so, you know, that's when we decided to start working together, started working with him, you know, and 90 days from that point, I'll never forget, it was shortly after, around the time that I graduated, I graduated May 6th, 2016 at Full Sail. Right, that okay. Was my graduation date. Right. And then I went heavy into real estate. I, st- I cut everything I was doing in music, everything I was doing, except, except for, you know, doing the content with him. I, I kept doing that. Right? Well, obviously, but right. I cut everything else out and I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this out. All in. You know what I mean? All in. 90 days from that date, September 26 of 2016. I will never forget it. Standing, uh-huh. I was standing outside the Crispers on full sale property. Title, title lady pulls up. It's like 6 p.m. at night. Title office is closed. She had to, she had to come meet me. I ain't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't have a car. I was going to school. Right. right. I was going to school, but I was in the area. And, and I decided I'm going to meet her here at this Christmas. Damn. Right? So she actually pulls up. This is graduation day? No, no, no. This is way after I graduated. After we graduated. This, this okay. Is September 26th. Okay. Right? Okay. So, so it's about three months later. All right. And she pulls up, meets me at the Christmas parking lot. Uh-huh. And she hands me the check of the closed deal. Oof. $31,125.97. Almost $2,000 more from what you've seen on the $30,000, the yes. previous check. Wow. Yes. Look at that. Yes. So that, so that same check I was looking at was manifested. And it's interesting. Boom. It happened, it happened because... I sought help. I'm going to keep it 100 with everybody. If it wasn't for that, with that one aspect right there, it would have never happened. I believe that. I believe that with every ounce of my being. Not because I don't think I'm powerful and I can't figure things out. 
but because I did not have the skill set, I did not have the mindset, and I did not have the know how to, to be able to make it happen. You understand what I'm saying? At least not in the time that I did. Because yeah. I'm gonna be honest, you know, throughout that time, it's a 90 day time frame. Real estate's not for the week. I'm gonna go ahead and tell everybody. Oh watching. man, yeah, we're gonna talk about week. that. Obviously, you know yeah, we want to talk about that. It's it, it's gonna require you to have the right mindset. It's gonna require you to build yourself, build your skill set, become a new person. All that's required, right? And the person who I was, shy, timid, afraid of sales, like. You can't have none of these, my, my right? First offer, I was sweating. I had my mentor in the car with me. He made, he made me write up the offer. I'll never forget. He made me write up the offer. We're sitting, we're sitting in the car right in front of the house, right? Uh -huh. The uh, the seller is inside the house waiting for us to come back in there with present our offer. He made me write that thing out. He made me gave that, give the offer. I promise you, Wes, I was sweating bullets. Just yeah. <laughs> You're like, man, am I like, doing the right thing? Oh, am I? Yeah. Like, I got to go back in here and do this. I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> Right, right, so right. I was so scared, bro, to do to do it, and so that person is not a person. Like I'll be honest with you, that kind of person is not going to be successful. Be, no, because here's the thing: in order for you to be successful in any sales position, in any business, you have to do what's hard, and you got to give your offers. Yeah, and you it, you have to have the confidence as well, exactly. too. You know, exactly. and I want to share a story with you because sure. you know, not too long ago, I would say about a year and a half ago. You know, I got into my first real estate uh, uh, investment property. It's over in Texas, right? And I partnered with a friend of mine, and he's more than likely watching the show. I partnered with a friend of mine and two other individuals, and we got into this deal. No experience, no know-how or anything like that. We just go in with blind faith. So we go into the deal, didn't end up working out the way we wanted to. We end up hiring a contractor and the deal end up taking about eight months because it was a fix and flip. It takes okay. about eight months for us to go ahead and refurbish the house. Okay. Problems after problems. You know, one thing led to another, unexpected situations, weather, termites and all these other issues. So... I ended up getting out of the deal. So it left a real bad taste in my mouth and everything. So now I ask myself, is this something that I really want to get into again? So with that, I shared that story because most people go into real estate their first time having that type of experience. Aside from getting a mentor, because that's number one. But a lot of people are afraid to. What is the recipe or what was the piece of advice you would to anybody that goes through a, a situation like I've went through mm. and what you have went through? I love the number one piece of advice that I give anybody who goes through a situation like that is keep walking. Get listen, back listen, into I, it. I, because life, this is what's going to happen to you. If anybody tells you that it's going to be an easy pass, straightforward. It's path, not. I've gotten into business deals where I've lost $50,000. And Damn. So you really have to have that tough skin to be oh, yeah. able to. Yeah. And, and remember, the path that we're all on here on this planet Earth while we're here, it's not about us. It's God. God grooms you for something greater. He, he's going to get something done on this earth through you. And the only way to do that is for you to finish your mission. And so if you've got your hand on something like with real estate for you. And you're doing that real estate deal. That wasn't by accident. You didn't get into real estate deal by accident, right? No. You know, I got together with some friends that we've discussed and say, hey, let's get into it. You know, exactly. this, right. this was something that you wanted to do. And, and it was a reason for that. So whatever the payoff was going to be for you in the end, in the long run, like imagine when you got into that deal, you had a vision of what, what the long term be, effect right? would be. Right. right. Understood. That is, that is postponed until you get back in the game. You'll never have it. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see so, what you're so, saying. Okay. So okay. take it from somebody who's been there. Like when I lost a, a substantial amount of money getting into a business deal that didn't pan out the way I thought it was going to pan out. I'll be honest with y'all. Like most people, I, I felt it, especially. Since, yeah, it's human nature. Yeah, it's human nature, you know? Right. Um, but until I got back in the game, everything was on hold. If your credit ain't high and it's actually down, the time to take action is now. Yeah.
If your credit ain't high and it's actually down, the time to take action is now. Go get control of your credit, you go and repair well, listen, cause I've been getting a lot of down. Oh yes, you show you the leverage, just so you can get a new ride or go get you a house. Just so you don't feel disparaged, you don't feel embarrassed, it's right, so go get it done now. Don't survive through the week, go and prove, get it up. Want a life full of freedom to do what you want. He's a guy that you need, he's a dude that you want. Not five minus three, that's two, number one. Guy you will see if you hit him up. Go help with devotion, this I am sure of. Updates, promotions, discounted courses. Work with him anywhere, but he's in Florida. Credit will get repaired. Yes, it will. Damn. So, so let me ask, why is there such a misconception that real estate's so easy? Because you've just debunked that. Because I'm assuming... There's a lot of trials and tribulations. I've went through it with my first and only deal, but I'm pretty sure you've went through it many times because you've built a career on it, right? But you hear, I remember growing up, late night there would be infomercials, these little late night infomercials. Oh, yeah, get into real estate, no money down, no risk. (laughs) (laughs) So you know what I'm talking about, right? So you've debunked that a little bit, right? So it's... Can you clear up some of the misconception? You know, I don't want to make it all glitz and glory for everybody here. So there's really going to be some tough times and when it comes to the real estate investing, obviously, right? Yes, yes. And, and obviously, the, the number one way that you minimize that is you, is you get some information and learn from somebody who has enough experience to, the mentorship. to, to get over those pitfalls that, that you may fall into because you don't know. You just don't know. You just don't know like, what you don't like, know. Yeah, like you said. You, you know, so we all could agree that if we would have known what was going to happen, we would have did something different. If you would have known, facts. you know, the facts. Red, yeah. You know, the other facts, way, of right? course. Right. So, so, so that's just the way it is. And sometimes we got to learn things that way. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? That's just how life is built. And that's why we got to get back in the game. So, yeah. So, so I want to go ahead and demystify a couple of things. I have a book called Five Shocking Secrets to Real Estate Riches. And what that book does is is literally debunk all the myths about real estate. So all the things that are keeping okay. people from getting into the game, we debunk that. The number one <laughs> thing that I want to go ahead and share with everyone, this is in my book. Okay, please like do. Like you said, most people, they get in the game, they're doing what? Flipping properties. Fix it, flip, right. And I like to think that's because <laughs> we have been programmed by... Good old TV. Right, exactly. <laughs> Good old age. That is how you do real estate. You buy houses, you renovate them. And then quick flip and, and boom. flip them. The thing about that, though, is there's a lot of risk tied to that. Really? What if the deal doesn't go right? Uh, what if while you're holding the property, it takes a turn? Makes Any, sense. The minute you take a deed on a property and you take ownership over it, you have risk. Here, so no matter what, it's a risk. It's a risky play. It's investing. Most anything you invest in has risk. Whether it's stock market, real estate, exactly. whatever the case may exactly. be. But the risk really comes because you have ownership. Think about it like this: How I got started in real estate was actually a low risk strategy to real estate investing. What makes okay. it low risk is that we're not taking on any deeds. We're not buying any property. This is called. Ooh. This is a method called wholesaling real estate. A lot of people know wholesaling real estate. There's a new term now, phrase now, flipping contracts. It's wholesaling. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. So that's how I got started. That's how I did my first deal. I took zero risk. I didn't buy any property, which is why I didn't have to have the money. I didn't have the money. I had a big minus sign in front of my bank account. Right. Damn. <laughs> so I yeah. Money. I had horrible credit under a 500 credit score. I was not anyone who was qualified to invest in real estate. Hold on. Wait a minute. So you're telling me you have a method to get into real estate with little to no money. Yeah. Fair to poor credit. Yes. And minimal risk 100 percent. oh no you got to talk man the, the the viewers on the edge of their seats man i know there's different strategies there's section eight the burr method the fix and flip wholesaling tell us about this particular strategy that you have just gave us a broad overview of sure so with this strategy this is wholesaling with this strategy okay right, okay you're finding just the investment opportunities is you position yourself as the buyer, so you put the property in a contract like you're going to buy it. Same thing like you uh, normally would in a regular transaction. Yep. yep. If you're going to get a loan. Or Makes sense, yeah. Hard, I mean, there's different, different ways, ways to finance the transaction. Yeah, right, right. Those are the mo- main two ways that most people know, right? Is right. cash and using their credit score. So you, that requires you to have those things. However, because with wholesaling, what we're going to do is instead of closing on the property, uh-huh. we're going to sell our right to buy the property because we have a contract which is your right to buy it 
I'm going to sell my right to buy it to an investor who's going to take the risk, to the investor who's going to flip that house or rent that house. I'm not going to do it. They're, They're going to do it. So in other words, you're transferring all of the risk to somebody else. Exactly. And oh. risk. They want the risk because so so I, so I do want to demystify another thing about real estate. Real estate investing is considered a high risk industry. It is. Yeah, when you go to get funding, if you got a real estate business, huh? you go to get funding, and it's got the name realty or real estate investment, anything like that, you are less likely to get funded. And if you do, you're going to get less funding. Why? Because banks consider that high risk. And I'll be honest with you, it is high risk if you don't know what you're doing. But if you do know what you're doing, you know how to analyze properties uh, properly. You understand the, the real estate market. You understand the different strategies. You understand things like appreciation, all these different things. It become, it, there's really not that much risk in real estate. Damn. Real estate is also the safest place to park your money. And it's also the, you know, the, I would say the number one path people use to build generational wealth as well, too. You know? 100%. So, wow. Okay. Now that you've kind of opened up the gates and, and shared with me. So wholesaling is a process where essentially you're not owning the home. You're not putting any of your own capital into the transaction. But you're still able to profit off of the entire deal. 100%. And it's very, very Hello, simple. man. No, I, may, I may stop being a podcaster, <laughs> man. Cause and what's awesome about it is that it's, it's a super simple strategy. It's not easy, right? It's a work involved, it's right. Easy, right? Okay. But it's simple. Find properties at a discount. Find investors that want to buy them. They're a dime a dozen. And then all you're doing is fulfilling the need. So when I find that piece of property, let's say I get a property for $50,000. Right, the seller agrees to sell it to me at 50. I did my evaluations. I checked the market. I looked at the house and all of that. And you know that 50000 is a good price for this particular right. property. 100%. Okay. All right. I know that at 50 grand, I'm getting it at a discount. 100%. Okay. So the property, all, you get it at 50, so it may be worth 75, 80, or whatever around. Or more. Right. Or right. more. Okay. 100%. So for simple math, let's say that the house, when I did my research, if I were to list this house on the market in tip top shape, it's worth 100 grand. Double than what you're about to get it 100%. for. Wow. And then what I do is I factor in the cost. If I was going to flip this house, I uh -huh. have to buy it. I got to pay. There's, there's cost associated with that. I got to sell it. There's cost associated with that. Borrowing money. There's cost associated so, so, with that. Damn. It's adding up now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, that, <laughs> man, that, but that, that, that profit is starting to cut it's down. Cut down. <laughs> right. So, so, so let's say that after, after I take a look at everything, uh -huh. in order for this to be a profitable deal for me, Considering everything that has to go into it, all the money that's got to be invested on the front end and on the back end, at seventy thousand dollars, I'm making a nice little profit. Well, that's ten percent, twelve percent ROI. Just you know, giving easy numbers. Right. So okay. I got to get this house at seventy grand in order. For, in, well, at seventy thousand dollars, I got to right. put twenty thousand dollars into it. Right. Damn. Which means huh. that I need to get it for fifty. To be able to come up with the profit that you want to, right, of the 20000 Exactly. Okay, exactly, understood. Exactly. So okay. as a wholesaler, my job, if, if, if I understand that this is what the investor needs to get the house for, for it to be a good deal. For actually, him as well, too. Yeah. Okay. If the investor needs to pay 50 because I did my numbers. Right. Right. As a wholesaler, I need to get it for 40 because I have to get my portion. Oh, of the so that's, that's, that's that spread right there. So if you get it at, if you, if, if you could get it at 40, therefore sell it to him at 50 mm -hmm. and that's how you make your, and you don't have to mess with all that, uh, the buying, the selling, <laughs> the repair, like you were saying, I got you. I don't got the money, I don't got to have the credit, I don't got to have nothing. nothing. All I got to, all I got to have is the, no, the ambition, the consistency. And the action to go out and find properties. The at property discount. at a discount. Wow. And then pass those opportunities to somebody else. That's all I've got to know. Yeah. Man, so and 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 obviously you have made a very successful how well up to this point, give or take a range, how many deals have you engaged in in wholesaling i would say what a, 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 a dozen hundreds or anything like that a lot a lot huh <laughs> definitely a lot definitely a lot definitely wow a lot. man man so okay well let me ask you a question what's some of the downfalls of wholesaling yeah you know because i know everything is not peaches and cream and what and wholesaling but although you've laid it out man i mean you got me Second guess in my career over here. So what's some of the things people should look out for when they, if they want to get into wholesaling? Sure. The number one thing is get educated. 
wholesaling is a super simple business. I feel right. like people overcomplicate it. And, Just keep and it simple, then. You got to keep it simple, and, and and the main reason why people overcomplicate it mm-hmm. is because they just don't have a good understanding of how to do everything, right? Okay. So thank God I had somebody who could, who could show me the ropes. I was overcomplicating it. Right. Get the calls, not call back because I, I'm concerned I might say the wrong thing, right? Like, <laughs> you feel you know, me? You're, you're like, like, yeah, that stage like, fright I you get. The list. Uh huh. I'm marketing to them because I didn't get a response right away. I'm thinking I got the wrong list. I got to go pull another. Yeah, no. <laughs> like all, all these little things is delaying your success that you get educated on the business. And it's also important that you get clarity on what you're doing. So that way okay. you can do, you mentioned confidence, right? You can do it confidently it knowing that, it. okay, it's only a matter of time. When you have the right education, you have the right business model. Like it's only a matter, matter of, time. of time. Right. This is why consistency is so important. This is why mindset is, is huge. You know what I'm mm. saying? So it's almost a numbers game. It's like a basketball player. If you take a certain amount of practice, a certain amount of free throws, you're going to perform well in the game shooting a free throw. So same thing here. You put the reps in, you put the time in, eventually the yeses are going to come, in other words. 100%. 100%. Okay. All right. And so I, I say all this because I want to make sure that I put the capstone to the previous uh, question. Okay. Right. This is honestly the best way for anybody who's new in real estate investing to get started. Okay, so because, you recommend this strategy oh yeah, 100, here. 100% because remember, fixing and flipping, you're taking risk. With this strategy, uh, you're not taking any risk, but you, but you can make flipping money, right? So uh, average flip, $30,000, right? 25K or and up. You know what I'm that's saying? the average. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Selling, uh-huh. You can close deals, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. One of my students had a, one of my students had to deal 100k. So like wholesaling, like you're not taking any risk. He's gonna, he's gonna take the property, pass it on to some, some to, uh, to somebody else. And the wholesaler, their obligation or their participation in the deal ends at closing. They don't have to go through the whole. Once they close on the property, you get your money, you walk away, you move on to the next. The investor is the one that got to deal with everything else after that. Damn, it finished. So this is a great strategy for people who want to get into real estate investing, but they don't have the experience. Right. They don't have the know-how. Why take on a lot of risk doing something you've never done before if there's a way for you to learn it with little mm. risk? It's, it's, it's almost like getting paid to learn. I look at wholesaling as a strategy where you get paid to learn how to become a good real estate investor. Why is that true? Because in order for me to serve my client, I have to know what a good deal looks like. At the end of the day, I got to get it at a lower price than they need it for. Right. Okay. I know what a good deal looks like. What does that make me? That makes me a great investor because investing is nothing more than putting your money into something and getting a positive ROI from it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. A great investor makes money off their investments. The the number one rule to investing is never lose money. Hey, hey, that's pretty common sense right there, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, wholesaling is everyone's way to be able to learn the game of real estate investing. So if you want to learn what a good rental deal looks like, make it a priority, make a decision and be intentional if you're going to wholesale real estate to serve landlords. Why? Because you start getting around some landlords who you got to get properties for. Guess what they're going to tell you? Oh, this is the price I need it for. You know, they ask me, how do you do the the numbers? So I know when I'm looking at these houses, I can consider that. Factor that in when you're doing your your due diligence. My money comes from creating getting the deal for less than what i need to sell it to you for you makes sense okay so as long as you get what you want you, you're gonna buy the deal period at so, the end of the day so as you buy the deal and i factor in the profit for me i'm making money every time so anybody can really get into real 100%, 100%. estate 100 there's nothing stopping you from doing this so that now i get when how you started to show where it's almost a god-giving obligation to own property and, and having dominion because again, even the average person, even if you're a nine to five, if you're a single mother, whatever the case may be, you could not have the money, the capital, the credit, the experience, but still be able to profit off of real estate through this strategy. Hundred percent. Wow, that's and, beautiful. And, and you can leverage this new stream of income. You can leverage this skill set to be able to improve your life. Right. So a lot of people that do real estate, that do wholesaling specifically, you know, how it's marketed and everything like that, just the business model, no right. money, no credit. So a lot of people that end up getting into this uh, part of the real estate investing industry, a lot of times they don't have great credit. 
Oh, so this is perfect for a lot of people just to get their feet wet, exactly. man. So you get to learn what a good deal looks like. So whenever you're actually ready to do your first one, guess what? God has blessed you. Uh huh. He's blessed you with the knowledge to be able to identify what's going to make you money. And you have now built an engine to go get that for you. And you never have to rely on them on the market during COVID 2020. While real estate investors were shutting down their businesses, while people were selling their houses because they, they had to pivot. They had, there was a moratorium. I don't know if you remember this, right? Moratorium right after COVID. Banks could not foreclose. Landlords. Oh, yeah, business. yeah, you're so right. I remember law, that. Yes. Right? You cannot nobody, evict nobody. You, can do you can't do anything. You, they got to stay. Right. right. Okay. So what happened? A lot of landlords. Landlords, they were losing. Man. Yeah, and a good chunk of them. This was, so guess what a lot of them started selling? They walked away from they deals away, or they sell. Right. Right. And so I identified the opportunity. Ah. I identified that, you know, eventually these bank loans, these foreclosures that aren't happening are just going to start stacking up. And eventually when this moratorium is done. Oh, you're going to have a market of opportunities. A huge boatload of properties. Just waiting for you. So while people were shutting down their wholesaling operations, ours was picking up. Why? Because we understand that while we're serving investors, we got to know who, who's still operating. Right, we gotta Makes know sense. who's still buying deals. That's number one, and then we gotta know where can we get the deals from in, in this time. And how you identify where you get it from is you gotta solve a problem, right? You gotta solve. At the, you have to at find the end a of the day, who has an actual issue, and you have to be able to solve their problem. And in return, they'll give you a property at a discount to get uh, out from underneath that home. And that problem could be, you know, divorce, exactly. sickness, loss of job, whatever the case may be, right? Exactly. Okay. Well, let me ask you a sure, question. So that, if I wanted to get into wholesaling, what, how do I find a deal and how do I identify what a good deal is? Sure, sure. So I, I take it that you'd probably pick where you want to do business and all of that. Right. Say it's <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. We're right. in Broward County. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. You, you picked a good market. Okay? okay. At that point now, to go find deals, you got to think about what problem I want to solve. It's the fastest way. Right? So back to that question back again, to, what problem I want to exactly. solve? So let's, okay. let's just say, what was the problem you mentioned? You, you oh, a divorce is, right? yeah, okay. Divorce is a little bit more tough. You got to have relationships to get to get access to that data, right? Understood. But, but some, of, some of the other types of problems that are- Somebody know, lost a job, a uh, 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 sickness or something like that. Any problems, something along those lines, right? So exactly. I see and, and some of these problems you can actually identify right on the internet and pull a list of those people in seconds. The tool- gives me the ability to get access to real estate data. And the tool has access to public records. The tool will tell me who has gone through probate. The tool will, oh. tool will tell me which landlords are tired of being landlords. The tool will tell me who's going through foreclosure. The tool will tell me who's behind on their taxes. And guess what I could do? Now I could say, oh, wow, somebody who's behind on their taxes, that's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. this out, you know, the county's going to take their house <laughs> you know for nothing. And right. So, and, and so they've got a choice. You're either going to have to liquidate the home, figure out something to do with it, or they're going to let it go to the county and get nothing. So you can be that problem solver who, who steps in, right? And, and how you market to them is you pull a list of them. You get their address, the mailing address, letters. Oh, so this is where the outreach comes into play exactly. now. You know, and then you give them a call. You, you utilize a process called secure tracing. This is where you take the person's name and a piece of data like their uh, address. You search online to get their phone number. Okay. Right? So the tool I mentioned to you just a second ago, that tool gives you access to all of that data, their phone number, everything in seconds. Wow. In seconds. Perfect. So Go you can pull a list in literally like five minutes, a list of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. How many records? You, you can compile. Right? Okay. And then you got their phone numbers right there. You start calling them. Bam. Right, right inside the system, you can start sending letters. Bum, 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 bum. So now just in instantly like that, instantly. automated. Instantly. Mm. So now you're in their mailboxes and you're giving, giving them calls, and all you want to know, Wes, they are interested in selling their home and getting an offer. Say, hey, you, you have a problem, we could solve it. Exactly. Got it. Got exactly. it. Got it. Man. Hmm. And so that's how you find them. And obviously, the people who tell you, yes, I am, you start talking to them. So there's a four-step sales process in the real estate business. The first step we talked about is outreach. That's everything we just talked That's about. the first step, right? Getting the list and reaching out to the people. The second step is discovery. You got somebody who's interested. You have to find out about their situation, their motivation, all the different things. Build a relationship and nurture it a little exactly. bit. Exactly. And then you make them an offer. You take your offer, then you fulfill it. That's the four steps. Really? Just like that? So the outreach, the discovery... The offer and the fulfillment of the offer. 100%.
Hmm. Got me thinking about another career here, Gene. I'm telling you, man. Seriously. So if anybody that's listening and watching the show right now, if they follow these particular steps, and of course, like you said, have some key components like the mentorship and everything, literally they can become successful in closing a deal. Well, typically, what's the time frame it would take someone that's just getting into the industry to be able to close their first deal? It took me 90 days. I, 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 Damn. I have students who have completely blown me out of the water this time. I got a, I got a handful of students who've done it in 30 days. And your first deal, you said 30,000. My God, that's, that's, that's 31,000. 31, yeah, let's get that right. <laughs> he still remember, as you can see. You always remember that first one, but damn, that's what's up. Well, let me ask you, would you ever, here's another question. Could you wholesale any type of property? Can it be a single family, multifamily, commercial, you know, so you don't have to just do one type of property. 100%. Man, that's interesting. Is it best to initially focus on a specific type of property until you spread your wings? I recommend single family homes only because that's where the, the most demand is at. Makes sense. Okay. And it's simple. Like, like once you start getting into land and you start getting into multifamily, how you analyze those deals, the process you go through. It's, it's a little complicated, different, complicated. Right? You want to make things super simple for you. Here's what you want. You want a big buyer pool and you want a simple process, Right. So flipping, uh, most investors that are stepping into real estate to invest in real estate, uh -huh. they're not doing the multifamily. They're not doing the land. Single family you know is usually the low-hanging fruit right exactly. there. So those are your clients. So if you have a big pool of them, you got a great chance that you're going to move a lot of property because you got yeah. so many people that are looking for those deals. Wow. And, and those properties are simple. Like, it's, it's, it's simple math. So. But would you ever get into any other method of real estate investing or you're going to just stay into the wholesale? Would you get into the fix and flips or get into the, the, the buy and hold and things like that? Great question. And uh -huh. the answer is I, I have. Okay. <laughs> you already answered that question, right? So, so about, so I did this, I started in 2016, about right around 2018. Okay. I did my first flip. Okay. And the reason I did it was because I, I did the wholesaling thing so much where it, I know how it to became easy right? for you. Right. Do. Right. So I okay. Kept finding these deals, kept finding these deals. And there was one investor that I literally made a millionaire from it. Right. I turned him into a millionaire. Off right? this deal that you brought to off, him. Off of deals I was just feeding him. And I saw it right in front of my eyes. I'm like, yo, he, this, dude's, this dude's a millionaire now. Right. So, Damn. So when I realized something, because he'd always come back to me. Oh, of course. <laughs> he, he yeah. yeah. Me, like, like, he, he had me and his family and everything. He invited me over his house and all that stuff, teaching me stuff. He was an older guy. Right. Right. And from hearing like all the success that the properties I was giving him was doing for him, I'm like. The light bulb went off. Yeah. It's like, I hold on. I could do it. Yeah. If, I could get some if, of this if money. I find them. Yeah. First off, if I'm finding them, I got a better deal than him anyway. You, you get what I'm saying? I'm just giving all the money away. You know what I'm saying? So Right, okay. So when I when I realized that, that's when I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready now to go to the next to graduate. You know what I'm I think I'm ready to graduate. So I did my first uh my first flip. Okay. I did that back in 2018. Uh it was I waited because I wholesale, right? I right. waited until I had a no brainer deal to do it. Because like yeah, people, you're I didn't want to lose money. <laughs> right? I, I didn't want to get in that situation where everything goes wrong. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking crazy, you know what I'm saying? And, and how I did that deal, I did it with none of my own money. Zero dollars out of my own Outsourced money. everything or you partnered? Zero. Man. I, I had contractors, everything, right? And But even down to buying the property, I didn't use any of my own actual money or credit. Wow. So I learned something called private private money lending. Private yeah. money lending, yeah. Uh, What's so, that? Break that down a little sure, bit for sure. us. So private money lending is when you pretty much get a mortgage from someone who isn't in the business of lending money, but they have money and they want the money to work for them. And they just need a safe vehicle to invest that money into and they want to get an ROI from it, right? Okay, so, 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 so it's a private investor. Exactly, exactly Understood, understood. Right? They don't want to get their could, hands tied yeah, into this, it. This could be a family, a friend, a doctor, lawyer, you know, whatever the case may be. They okay. know that they need to put their money to work and they have it, they just don't know. They don't want to put it in the house. bank they or anything like that, to, yeah. To procure properties, but you do. Right. So you can okay. find partnerships with them. You can get a loan from them. And then, you know, you're going to go put that money into real estate, which is a safe vehicle. Obviously. As long as you know what you're doing. Right. right. So that's the method I use to start buying property. To get in this first deal. And even to this day, that was back in 2018. To this day, I never buy a property with my own money. 
till this day. I just bought two houses. I'm working on a third. None of my own money. What the None heck? of my zero. When I, if, 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 when I tell you, zero dollars out of my pocket. And to sweeten the pot even more, uh-huh. I actually get paid at closing day to buy it. Because I get a wholesale fee. The difference is instead of an investor buying it from me, I buy it from myself. <laughs> What the <laughs> heck, that's, that's yo? The you know this is beautiful, bro. You giving straight game right now, man. So and and now you've obviously leveraged your skill set, your knowledge, and your talents to teaching others. You have a community doing so, right? Yeah. You know. So share share with a little bit now. How what's some of the success stories of some of your students, and how have they been doing when it comes to uh, uh, the real estate investing as well, too? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So what mm-hmm. I teach people how to, what to do is I right. teach them how to get started in real estate investing. Through wholesaling. So That's the gate the right there. You, right. you don't got to take any of the risk, but you're going to learn the game. You're going to okay. learn how to become a smart investor by doing these deals, right? Okay. I've, I've got students, someone, someone like Taylor, who worked in the medical field. Young girl, too. 20, so, 22 years old. She did her first deal in 30 days. She made $21,250 in Atlanta. In 30, in 30 days. days. I, I got another student. His name is Brandon. Brandon, also in Atlanta, he had lost his job right before we started working together. Oof. He joined my mentorship. I showed him the play. I showed him how to get going. I gave him the game. 35 days, he closed his first deal, making about $18,500. And on that same week, closed his second deal, totaling twenty eight grand. Jesus. And, and this is dollars. all money in their pocket, right? So, and, and, and the crazy part about it, aside from spending for the mentorship, maybe some software here and there, there's really no overhead, right? There's really nothing for them to, so most of that money that they've spent, aside from their time and things like that, exactly. right? And that is another benefit to this business. Real estate wholesaling uh-huh. is an asymmetrical return business. Asymmetrical returns is when you put a little bit of money in, but you get a whole lot out, right? right? So it only costs about five hundred dollars a month. I'm talking like if you've got really great systems, top line systems, right, right? Of course. And you're putting a little bit of money in marketing. It's only five hundred dollars a month, right? My <laughs> first deal, y'all. I did not have the big systems like that, but we have put eight hundred and fifty dollars, less than a thousand dollars, some mailers. And on, and on that first mailer that came back, that was the lead. That made me the thirty-one thousand dollars. Jeez! So this is asymmetrical. You put a little bit in, you get a whole lot uh, out. And then when you put it in perspective, because sometimes I gotta teach my mentees this, right? Because uh-huh. you know, we get sometimes we gotta unlearn things. Exactly the bad habits. So, so some people, you know, they look at the cost, right? Even though that this is a very low cost, low overhead business, they look at the cost, and rightfully so, I understand why. Right. But when you really put it in perspective, even if you have five hundred dollars a month and you ran the business for twelve months, that's six thousand dollars. To run a business good point, yeah. That could, that could close you deals, earn you, earn you all this money, and on top of that, a business that generates you wealth building opportunities whenever you are ready to take them. Because if you want to graduate to the fix or flip, exactly. you'll be able to do so because you have the knowledge and skill set exactly. of the whole side. Where could you go where you can invest six thousand dollars and it's for an entire year and potentially make six figures? Yeah. The return is crazy. Now, even selling bricks ain't going to do that for you. <laughs> Go ahead, you feel me? So, man, well, listen, Gene, you've given us so much game and everything like that. And, you know, we're, as we're ready to wrap up the show, I want to ask you one final question and everything so we can go ahead and leave the audience with a gem, right? So you've been extremely successful. You've a lot of mentees to be successful and everything like that. Now, I know you said having a mentor is the key component but if there's one piece of advice that it would take for anybody to build their blueprint into getting into real estate and it does have to be real estate it could be just a general piece of sure. personal development what's that one piece of advice you would get uh, give the audience absolutely other people's lives are tied to your obedience what that means is is that you doing whatever it takes to fulfill your mission and complete what you have envisioned is going to affect someone else's life. You not doing it will also affect their life too. Either way, yeah, I see what you're saying. The number one thing is to remain consistent no matter what. Keep putting one foot in front of the other, no matter what, so that you can create 
the future where those around you, including yourself, can truly receive everything that God has promised. So other people's lives are tied to your obedience. Man, well, listen, Gene, man, you have definitely given us some game here. I want think I'm going to tell y'all, hey, I'm going to go ahead and check out this wholesaling thing here, man. You don't be surprised y'all get a mailer from, you know, Blueprint Wholesaling. You feel me? So, you feel me? Don't get surprised y'all get a mailer. But listen, Gene, thanks for coming on to the show. If you could let every, the audience know where they can follow you. Uh, also, drop the name of your mentorship and any events, anything, your book. Let the audience know, you know, how can they get in, tap in with you. That will be great before we wrap up. For sure. So the first thing I want to go ahead and share, uh, you can find me at UCMADEUS. I am the host of the number one wholesaling podcast in the world called The School of Wholesaling. You can Ooh. find it on iTunes, Stitcher, or you can just go to SOWcontent.com. Dot com. Okay. Tap in, me, tap in with me there. I've got a wonderful book, which I mentioned. Right. Uh, Five Shocking Secrets to Real Estate Riches to help you demystify all those myths that's holding you back. <laughs> you <scared laughs> right. Action. Read that first and allow that to guide you to the next step. And then if you want to get mentorship, if you want to work with me, I have a community a school a, on school called the Real Estate Wealth School. Beautiful. Right? Okay. Uh, go to swcontent.com. All the information is there. Every Friday, right. I teach I, for free. I have a free real estate investing masterclass where I teach people how to get started wholesaling. Then I teach them how to start buying properties and investing. And then I teach them how to protect the wealth that they're building so no one can take it from them and they can pass it down to the next generation debt free. So I give that away for absolutely free, y'all. Y'all got to pay. Oh, uh, check it out, man. Listen, every Friday, he is giving out the masterclass, giving the game for free, y'all. Listen, so that means when you hear that word, that means no excuses. No, excuse. no, no excuses. excuses. You 100%. feel me? That's how we transform that word there. But listen, Gene, thanks for coming on to the show. Thank Glad you. to have you. Would like to do a part two about this. You know right, what I'm yeah. saying? Because, yeah. you know, although we cut for time, I, I definitely want to bring you back on the show again so we can get more knowledge, more elevated on this. And, uh, man, definitely want to tap in with you as well too man for definitely sure. all sure. right i'm all about that i'd love to, to teach some of the investment strategies as well you know we talked a lot about wholesaling get people going the next step to that though is to start owning some deeds and do it smart so we'll do it there. yeah get to that next level okay well listen guys thanks for tapping into the show again this was a great episode make sure you check out the podcast on youtube as well as spotify every tuesday every friday 4 p.m bringing to you a banging episode and as always please guys please hit that subscribe button and that like button as well too leave a comment let us know what we're doing out here if we're doing somewhat of a good job appreciate you for tapping in guys stay safe staying dangerous and as always we're gonna catch y'all on the flip side take care guys peace This conversation about building up your blueprint It's time to take it cause time is wasted Go grind and chase it, don't lose it This generation need integration with information to move with An inclination that is abiding and entertaining improvement Yep, let's Paul with blueprint This guests are exclusive Get on and tune in and then learn some new tips About credit, finance, investment A nice chance to get rich and buy land Flip it, quick nine bands Learn all the skills from whence he did it Learn how to build successful business Run up a mill and get the digits Run up a mill Look, safe place where guests are speaking Based on financial freedom All facts, no cap, believe it Podcast, you have to see it